I'm here with Dimitar Radif, who is uh, head of distribution and new TV platforms at uh, Nova in Bulgaria. Dimitar, um, you're launching a couple of you've launched you're launching an OTT service. You've already got some other OTT things uh, working already. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing and what the strategy is uh, in with regards to OTT from for Nova? Sure, thank you. Uh, I. Uh I am, as you said, the, the head of uh, the distribution, so, so naturally I look after uh, the pay business of the company, whether it's linear channels, whether it's new initiatives, so that's where my kind of a new platform uh, hat uh, is, uh, comes from. And uh, we are following very closely the developments in the industry that, that have to do with the transition from the linear uh, to the non-linear uh, formats. And OTT obviously is a, is a word that is grossly abused in the, uh, in the industry, but as every buzzword, it has its, uh, its reasons behind. Um, our strategy in that space is that uh, we're carefully looking at, first of all, uh, the movement of the consumer appetite from, from linear to non-linear formats. And that is today best uh, exemplified by the success, for example, of our AVOT uh, platform called Nova Play, um, with more than half a million uh, unique uh, viewers every month, uh, and uh, you know, accumulated close to five million uh, views, uh, is something to be proud of, and, and it's a great learning experience for us. Um, we also, as a, as a content uh, owner of, of a lot of uh, premium sports rights in the Bulgarian market, uh, spend a lot of time uh, investigating the appetite for uh, paid sports, uh, over-the-top delivery and, and non-linear delivery. Currently, we're experimenting with a, uh, with a small platform called Gong Play, which allows mobile viewing of a, almost a pay-per-view type uh, uh, sports events, whether it's a football game, a Formula One race, or a boxing match. Uh, and, and that shows some early promise, but we need to deal with, uh, with several uh, constraints in that business. Obviously, one is the technology. Um, the second one is the, uh, the limitation of the purchasing power in, a, uh, in, a, in the Bulgarian market, which, as most of the Central Eastern European uh, region, is, uh, is an especially price sensitive uh, uh, market. Uh, and thirdly, there is always the looming threat of piracy and, uh, uh, that we need to consider. Um, so our focus is on finding the right formula where we can package the right content, uh, offer it at the right price, and, uh, and make sure that the user experience is so s much superior to, to what people would find through, uh, through their usual uh, you know, uh, content discovery uh, ways that they would choose to pay uh, for content. And that's not an, easy, uh, not an easy game plan, but we believe in the long run this is what, uh, what's going to uh, play part into the transformation of, of the business of every TV station, including ours. Do you think sports is the most promising genre of content to enable paid for VOD services? What other challenges do you face in terms of encouraging people to pay on a regular basis for something? Uh, sport is the most promising uh, for two reasons. Uh, first, because it's life. So it has no value beyond its shelf life before its life transmission. Um, more or less, so piracy is a bit less of, a, of an issue, at least at this point in time, compared to movies or, or, or other formats. Um, and number two is the propensity of people to pay for a premium experience, with sport is, is slightly higher than it is with other genres, for example. So, yes, we think sport is going to be one of the uh, icebreakers when it comes to adoption of, uh, of OTT. Um, however, uh, I think in the end of the day and in the long run, uh, every format is going to go through the same evolution, with sport just being a little bit easier sell because of its uh, unique features as a, as a type of as a category of content. Do you have um, a particular view in terms of the viability of on-demand services or live uh, OTT services? with regarding ownership of rights? I mean, is it, do you need to really 
have the rights to make it work uh, on a, a, within the small territories you've got in Central and Eastern Europe. If you wanted to offer a wider VOD offering, for example, do you think you need an international scale, like, for example, a Netflix has? Um, I think this is a very interesting question because it's, uh, you can turn it around and, and, and be equally relevant. Do you need scale and international uh, uh, mass uh, and vice versa? Is original content going to be the ultimate driver of SVOT adoption for, for a small market with a national language that is different from English? Uh, for example, and uh, uh, with um, you know user uh, expectations that are slightly different than you know, your average American viewer, and I'm referring to the American viewer because everybody talks about 155 countries on the Netflix roster currently, but you know behind uh, uh, a global delivery of a of a unified service experience, uh, you hit the wall of content. And content not only as, as content windowing and content rights, one territory versus the other, uh, but mostly relevance. What's relevant to, uh, to an American viewer, not necessarily relevant to, uh, to a Bulgarian viewer in, to the same extent. So you need to be flexible. The problem with global companies is that they lose some of that flexibility. So I think there's going to be an increasingly important role in, uh, for local players uh, in, in the adoption of, of SVOT and, and non-linear viewing. Um, and Netflix will be kind of a, a poster boy for that whole movement. But I think the really successful ones, in the, in, especially in smaller markets, are going to be the, the local ones that are, that are more attuned with both the, the economic realities of the market and of the content preferences of the viewers. Do you see a shift happening quickly in terms of viewers adopting these platforms? We hear a lot about piracy in the region. Do you think you can compete with the pirates on the paid-for side? And also, how much scope is there to increase revenue on the advertising side, which you're already offering? Um, well, these are three questions in one. <laughs> so where do I start? Let's start with the ad revenue. Uh, um, uh, definitely the monumental shift that needs to take place, which is just about taking place in, in the big developed Western markets like the US and the UK is the, is the measurement system. We're still lacking uh, and, and lacking and, and we're behind uh, in that respect. So ad monetization is going to be uh, vitally dependent on, uh, on the capabilities of the research uh, companies and, and the whole industry as, as, uh, as, as an industry body in adopting the new metrics that, that the digital viewing brings with, uh, with it. That's the, the first part of your question. Uh, the second part of the question regarding piracy. Um, we need to fight piracy on several fronts. And, you know, uh, regulatorily, obviously, we need to strengthen the, the case for, for legal content versus uh, illegal access. Uh, but more importantly, for me as a marketer and as, as somebody who is in the business, um, is we need to win uh, the hearts of the consumer by providing a uh, high, much superior customer experience. Uh, and that goes not only with the content itself, it has to do with the content discovery mechanisms and, and opportunities that our platforms need to provide versus you know, the more dodgy uh, ways of, of getting uh, and finding content uh, online. Um, so, so it's not a lost battle by far. I'm very optimistic that ultimately, you know, the, more, the better superior customer experience packaged with the right content, packaged with the right analytics, packaged with the right marketing uh, uh, proposition is going to win uh, against piracy because, you know, economics also work in favor of, of legal business model. And this is what, what's happening in the more developed economies. As people get a little bit more money in their pocket, they're uh, less willing to, you know, risk or, or waste their time uh, looking for something free when they can find uh, proper quality if it is at the right price. And this is always the big, uh, the big challenge.